much. Um, really appreciate the opportunity to en engage with all of you today. Um, this is a presentation on emotional intelligence for early career natural resource management professionals. And I chose this topic uh, because of my uh, history and uh, professional career with the National Park Service and the U.S. Forest Service for the last 35 years um, in wildland fire management. Um, as these kinds of uh, topics emerge, it, it becomes really intriguing for me to see how these fit into both our work world and within our career fields uh, and educational fields. So I title it, Why It Matters and Why You Should Care. Uh, this is emotional intelligence is something that be, became really interesting to me probably about 10 years ago, uh, realizing that my job was not entirely all about firefighting and the competency in firefighting, but there's also an emotional uh, intelligence component to um, doing your job really, really well. So I started doing some research and realized that this was an area that I certainly was intrigued by and that we used quite a bit. Uh, in our work environment. So there's five different parts of this that I'd like to go over and then we'll have a 20 minute um, discussion. If there's more people that uh, join in, uh, that'd be great. If not, we'll just end it at a 20 minute presentation. A Little bit about my background and my career. I started fighting fire when I was still in college at Northland College. I graduated with a bachelor's degree in outdoor education and biology and started working at the Apostle Islands National Lakeshore uh, in 1983 and then transferred uh, to Grand Canyon where I worked for a number of years there. Uh, and then in 1990, transferred to the Forest Service and worked at the Payette National Forest, Manti LaSalle, Humboldt Toyabe, El Dorado National Forest, and then just recently was the fire chief at Yosemite National Park and I was there for the last 14 years. Okay, so the one of the first uh, emotional intelligent um, uh, pillars is called self-awareness. So emotional awareness, really thinking about your lens versus other people's lens in terms of the communications that we're having on a daily basis. So re reactions to un unpredictable situations, and then being able to have a, a really good understanding, what are your core values, your beliefs uh, in resource management? Um, because sometimes having that conversation with other people, uh, those values that we have grown up with and we enter the work world with is different. And having that conversation with one another begins that self-awareness uh, about how we're the same or different in our work environment. And then having a uh, accurate self-assessment, you know, a lot of folks really like the, the 360 and, and feedback opportunities for knowing where your strengths and weaknesses are uh, is super important. And I think this is one area I wish I would have spent more time in, in terms of, you know, where, who are the people that you trust for, for feedback and that accurate self, um, self assessment. That really helps really strengthen the, the opportunities for uh, increasing productivity and communication in the work environment. And then self-confidence, and this is uh, uh, by developing your, and improving your field skills. This is one area I believe that if this is a passion that you have for your work, it naturally comes that your practice will improve your field skills. Believe in yourself and always ask for help when you need help. Um, humble regarding mistakes and lessons learned, and I wish I could um, say that uh, that it, this is an easy thing to practice is knowing when we've made mistakes or we've had failures and then being able to learn from them. Um, one of the things that I believe is really tough for a lot of us is to own up to mistakes or maybe even thinking about how we could have done things differently. And this, the sharing these lessons learned really help, really helps improve the self-confidence. The uh, second um, uh, characteristic of emotional intelligence is self-regulation and, and self-control. And a lot of folks have said in the past, well, that's just the way I am. And if you are working around uh, a very loud or aggressive individual, 
um, you can really tell that that's really different. That self-control is very, very low. So what we're really aiming for is understanding where your triggers are. Are you really easily frustrated? Are you impulsive? And, and being able to uh, restrain that uh, in, in our conversations. Um, I've been through a couple of situations where I've lost self-control and I remember thinking that, yep, that's just the way I am. I'm an opinionated person, but you also have to really realize how that affects other people. That just because that's the way you are, uh, that it has very, it can have very negative consequences with individuals. So understanding where you are with, with self-control doesn't mean that you shouldn't say anything. It's just how the conversation uh, goes with, with, other, with other people. Trustworthiness. I like having this conversation with folks is how do you know when people trust you and what makes you trust other people? Uh, this is a really key part uh, of really developing strong relationships is are, do, do people trust you? Uh, and if they don't, how come? But having that conversation within your, uh, within your group or within uh, in, with one-on-one um, -on -one conversations, it's, this is a tough area that can really, you know, expose some potential weaknesses uh, that we can certainly all grow on. And adaptability. Are you, uh, do you have the ability to um, manage change and handle change? Uh, this is, uh, uh, some folks really tend to get really set in their ways and they become less adaptable. And so by, by really kind of uh, stopping for a moment and saying, yeah, I can be adaptable in, in moving forward in a different way than what I thought um, we should move in. So um, oftentimes some of the successes that I've had in, in, in regulating my own impulses is taking other people's, you know, thoughts and ideas and affirming them. And once you start affirming other people's thoughts and ideas, then that's when you really kind of start that, that gelling of communication. Uh, one thing with, uh, with self-regulation that I've really noticed as well is that there's naturally some people are, are sarcastic, um, they're defensive, and you really got to watch out for that uh, because that can be really caustic in, a, in an environment where um, it does definitely lend itself to not trusting one another. Um, if you feel like someone uh, is being snarky or sarcastic or they're gossiping, you know, about you or about the team or about the process, uh, it can become um, very detrimental. So having that, that ability to recognize that is really important too, but then you really do have to take it to that next level of having a, um, a conversation and in, a, in a way that's non-threatening. Uh, just to make sure that people understand that that, that really tends to, to tamp down um, uh, trustworthiness and, and moving forward. The next uh, uh, characteristic is motivation. Achievement, commitment, and initiative, and optimism uh, uh, has to do with um, uh, this piece of emotional intelligence and motivation. I, uh, I definitely had a passion for wildland fire and, and in really doing your best work is making sure that you can find that, dig for that passion uh, in your work. Um, it'll come, it just takes, sometimes it takes a while. I don't think it was probably 10 years after uh, graduation for me until I really found that, yep, working in wildland fire is something I, I I was very, very passionate about. And I just, I remember the moment of the epiphany that I had that, yep, this is what I'm going to uh, do for the rest of my life. Um, and I, uh, I really hope that folks find that, that they don't get stuck in something that they feel that, that they do, that they can't do their best work because really what we need is people that are passionate to do their best work now and into the future. The commitment to your to your to yourself and your family and in your team is is really noticeable, and that also uh, accelerates the motivation in your team. If if your team really senses that you have a commitment to the goal, the objectives at hand, um, 
it becomes contagious and and you absolutely have an effect on on other people's motivation when they see the the commitment that that you're you're putting out there um, to the project this uh this part of initiative is is something i i really like too is is i've often been around um folks where i've seen where they sit back and they watch for you know people to tell them what to do and, and really the high achievers that that have done very well they they almost have this intuition to to, to take the initiative to see to complete the work that needs to be done without being told and and that is truly recognized by uh, um, not only your peers but your direct reports and and supervisors and optimism uh, how many times have you failed and yet you got back up and tried again? So having that sense of that it's okay to fail and and make mistakes, but having that optimism to get back up and try again is is a really another important piece of this. Recognize that there's people out there that really, really do want to support you and find out who they are because those are the those are the folks that they they really do want to see you do your best. Um, there was a, a, a point in time early in my career where uh, I had a supervisor um, who pulled me aside and said, look, I, I, I'm going to tell you something about yourself that you may not know about, but the only one of the reasons that I'm telling you this is I, I really believe in you and I want to see you succeed. And I think that was one of the the biggest lessons that I that I was ever able to learn early on was like I could fail, but I trusted this person to help backstop me and be very truthful and honest with me um, that he had my best interests in mind. Uh, and I did try to practice that because that uh, again gave me you know the motivation to 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 really do a lot better, even though I made it. I made mistakes and have failed. This is one I uh, have a hard time with sometimes is, is empathy. Um, I often tend to uh, think that I do a lot of problem solving uh, on my own. Uh, and I don't often think about how other people are being affected by things at home, things going on um, in our daily lives with, with current events. And so oftentimes I, when I'm pretty driven or motivated to uh, move forward on a project, you know, start with empathy of, of really the, the, the appreciative inquiry with, with other people in your group, knowing that, um, you know, small talk is super important to uh, developing that connection. And, and understanding others uh, and, and be particular about the fact that the events or circumstances are your lens and they may be seeing something very different through their lens because of their own personal values uh, and beliefs that, that, they, that they have. Um, I, I know in, in our family talking about politics, it's really hard that everyone has an opinion uh, about the political landscape that we're in right now and, and watching some family members really try to be uh, very, um, uh, trying to be very persuasive, but they're certainly coming at it with a different lens than I am. And, and understanding that will, will help um, with the empathy of how others are feeling as well. This is a really, this next piece about developing others is, is a very successful uh, way to uh, um, show others that you are concerned for the development of, of your direct reports, of others that you're willing to work with, is training and coaching others. So I kind of look at training and coaching and mentoring somewhat um, in the same light, but they really are very, very different. Uh, training to me is learning a skill. You know, coaching is is encouraging people, uh, empathetic um, with um, their their weaknesses and and where they need to improve. Kind of think about a, a you know a track coach or a coach that you had you know in high school or in college that 
you know, they really had, you, you know, your best interests in mind and really wanted to see you develop. And then, you know, mentoring is more of a long-term, you know, relationship in terms of a, uh, a person, but uh, uh, developing uh, others and finding someone that you can trust, um, it doesn't hurt to say, hey, uh, if you recognize that there's someone within your sphere that is very influential and you would like to understand how they um, create this environment for um, developing others, just there's nothing wrong with with asking someone if you could form a very informal kind of coaching relationship. Mentoring sometimes uh, takes on a connotation of a lot more work and, and is more formal, whereas coaching is, hey, can I call you from time to time and, and talk to you about um, situations that I'm in um, or um, giving guidance? I think that really helps. And service orientation. Um, think of others, uh, care about the individual uh, needs as well. Uh, le leveraging diversity and inclusion, it's, it's pretty much all we hear now um, in terms of uh, uh, racial equity and, um, and, and justice. So I, this is a piece that um, I've been very interested in my career because the field that I'm in in Wildland Fire is very uh, male dominated. There's very few females that um, get to the level of, of managing a complex program that I did. Um, but it's very important for, um, I think better decisions are made. Uh, as a matter of fact, I know better decisions are made when we really do uh, embrace diversity and inclusion. And I just put this little uh, thing down here is diversity is something you can see and inclusion is something you, that you can feel. And, and I've noticed that pretty much throughout my whole career is that when I step on stage and give a briefing, the first thing people see is that I'm a woman and in our society doesn't, um, doesn't expect to see a woman in an operational role. Uh, so I've had to overcome a lot of obstacles with myself personally and within our social um, community within Wildland Fire to try to overcome that uh, and still go on uh, and feel like I wasn't gonna quit, but I knew that this was uh, something that was very important to me and doing the best that I could to um, also work with men who were interested in, in hiring women. Um, but again, the reason that this is important, that I feel this is so important is that it, it really does reflect who we are as a society. Uh, it, it increases productivity. You're excited about coming to work when you do feel like you're in an inclusive environment. Uh, the last one here is social skills. Uh, this is, uh, uh, again, we've gone through leadership training, but un really understanding social skills in natural resource management, wildland fire, um, or as we work, start uh, um, um, le uh, moving into the work world. Are you an influencer? Do you inspire others through example, words, and deeds? And and I, I uh, have been impacted by many influencers and uh, I really watch how they um, acknowledge others' work rather than just saying, hey, that was a really good job, but I really liked how you led in, a, in the complex situation of taking a group um, on some really tough terrain, and here's the things that, that, um, that I thought went really well. So influencing, being an influencer, um, is developing that, that social skill is, is really important. Communication, I think that this, your generation, the folks that are in college and just moving into natural resource management are far ahead of where I was uh, at your age in terms of the, that, that self-confidence of being able to communicate, to communicate up and down the chain of command and being transparent and honest. Um, yes, there's probably some still some hidden agendas, but try to think that there's no hidden agendas. Um, so being able to speak up and speak out without fear of retaliation or retribution, it, it's probably still there to some degree, but I think the more that you practice it and the more that your intent is good in terms of really seeing things and wanting to communicate is really the, the positive aspects that, that, people, that people see or will notice about you. 
in conflict management, do you avoid conflict or, or do you step into it? And again, this is a, this is a tough one because a lot of people naturally want to avoid conflict, but if it is in your work environment or your career um, or education, it's, it definitely has to be addressed as people become less productive and they're, they're not as um, uh, confident in their work. So tact and diplomacy, you don't have to get mad, um, but really being able to listen, that's where the listening skills come in and um, can be very productive. Leadership, what are the attributes that you most admire? And I like having folks do a little exercise of going back and thinking about the, the coaches and the leaders that, that you admire and what are some of the, the qualities that you would like to emulate or put into practice um, that you probably don't do or maybe not even, you may not even be aware of um, that would be uh, beneficial. Collaboration and cooperation. Uh, again, the later on in my career, I had no idea how important this was going to be to both this, my personal success and the success of the program is, is really um, um, collaborating with your team. Uh, and the uh, really important is with your external partners and, and gaining that trust and respect with people from, from the outside because you really do you know, want others within the organization and or significant stakeholders to be uh, supporting the work that you're doing. Okay, um, Stacy, this is the end of my 20 minute presentation. And uh, these are just the, the five different um, emphasis on leadership and followership within, within emotional intelligence. We don't have to go through all of them. Um, but we can certainly, um, if there's a couple of people on the, on the uh, presentation that might want to, um, that see something that we want to talk about, I'm, I'm certainly willing to facilitate that. Sure. And I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording now.